but please give a warm, warm, loving round of applause to Benjamin Sines. I'm going to read a poem entitled The Ninth Dream, War in the City in Which I Live. All my life, let me say this so you understand, all my life, I have heard stories of the river and how people were willing to die to cross it, to die just to get to the other side. The other side was the side I lived on. And people died to get here? My mother nodded at my question in that way that told me she was too busy to discuss the matter and went back to her ritual of rolling out tortillas for her seven children, some of whom asked questions she had no answers for. We were poor as a summer without rain. We had an outhouse and a pipe bringing in cold water from a well that was as unreliable as the white man's treaties with the Indians, Unreli unreliable as my drunk uncles, unreliable as my father's Studebaker truck. I was six. It was impossible for me to fathom why anyone would risk death for the chance to live like us. I have heard people laugh when they see the Rio Grande for the first time. That is the river? But that river has claimed a thousand lives. Mexicans caught in its current, making the river, mistaking the river as something tame. And in one second, the river devoured them whole. The survivors have handed down this lesson. Nothing in the desert is tame. Not the people, not the sand, not the winds, not the sun, not even the river that resembles a large ditch that's laughed at by visitors and locals alike. Nothing in the desert has ever had anything resembling mercy on Mexicans attempting to leave their land to become something they weren't meant to be. People are still crossing. People are still dying. Some have died suffocating in boxcars. Some have drowned. Some have been killed by vigilantes who protect us in the name of all that is white. Some have died in a desert larger than their dreams. Some were found no hint of their names on their remains. In the city that is my home, border patrol vans are as ubiquitous as taxi cabs in New York. The white vans are part of my landscape, a part of my imagination no less than the sky or the river or the ocotillos blooming in spring. The West is made of things that make you bleed. I no longer hang images of summer clouds or Indians carrying pots on their talented heads or Mexican peasants working on the land with magic hands. On my walls, I no longer hang paintings of the holy poor. We have been fighting a war on this border for hundreds of years. We have been fighting the war so long that the war has become as invisible as the desert sands we trample on. I do not know how long this will continue. Peace is like the horizon. We can see it in the distance, but it is always far and we can never touch it. Every day in what passes for a newspaper in the city in which I live, someone writes a letter ranting against the use of the Spanish language because this is America. And I can taste the hate in the letter, can almost feel the spit in the letter writer's mouth. And I know we could not ever speak about this without one of us wanting to hurt the other in the city in which I live. I will tell you a sad story. White people are moving away from the city that has claimed my heart. They are running away from my people. They are running away from all that keeps us poor. I want them to stay and fight. I want them to stay and live 
with my people. I want them to love the people that make the food they love. And there are people waiting in line, spending their fortunes just for a chance to enter, waiting just blocks away from where I sit, waiting to come over, waiting in Juarez, just across the river from China and India and all the nations of Africa and Central America and Asia. No poet, no engineer, no politician, no philosopher, no artist, no novelist has ever dreamed a solution. I am tired of living in exile. I am tired of chasing others off the land. Let me say this again, again. I want this war to end, to end.